Do you think that level of fame that you had, do you think that damaged you to some extent? Because no, it obviously no. shifted your perception of, mm. I don't know who I can trust. I don't know what people's intentions no, are. No, I'll be, look, what, what was, and I realized after, didn't help is because I had it rough when I was young. My dad was crazy. Love him, but it was, it was rough. In any way you can think. So I didn't know anything else. So, and then you arrive in a dressing room. It's also, don't cry. Don't share your, your emotions. Don't be vulnerable. My dad, my mom, my family, football. Like, it went higher. Instead of balancing what you were not, I went even more south with it. And you're successful. How are you going to realize that it's not what, how you're su supposed to behave at times? Or, or, you know, I couldn't... People always say, oh, switch it on and switch it off. You have a game every free day. I want to kill everybody at home. Myself, everybody is no. Everything was a game. Everything was a competition. Everything was everything is. It's no switch off. It's what like. What about now, though? Do you look back and feel satisfied? Yeah, yeah. No, seriously. I uh, like my kids. My kids are reliving my life through my kids. Like the other day, I was watching a video my, because my son wanted to see a video of of, of me because he never saw me play. And it's kind of weird because I, I, I enjoyed it. I looked at it, I was like, damn. That was all right. That's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I remember that goal. Side, however you want to take it, and maybe you think I'm trying to be humble or not humble or whatever, but it's true. I looked at the video. Before, if someone would, would have showed me that video, I'd have said, I don't have time for this, man. I wouldn't even look. Sometimes I didn't even enjoy some goals that I scored, and I just went, I just, you know, I, but I didn't know. Like, if you don't know, you don't know. I didn't know. That wasn't my way to express myself. Can I ask you a question? Do you think that's part of why you want to coach? Because you're always looking for, like, no, how you know do what? I achieve next? For a very long time, like, coaching is the closest to the game, so obviously you, you just... You, you, the line is there, right? But I feel the need of explaining to people things. It's, it's, it's me, and I need to... Educate. You want to teach? Share, because educating sometimes can be seen as you're the teacher and you're the student. student. I like to share. We're on the same level. Let me, let me, let me help you. You know, I, I just, you know, make people understand the game. Like, I'm that type of guy, and, and I, I was, I was, I said that to Pete the other day, and he laughed. You know when people ask you, do you like the glass half empty or at least half, do you see it, sorry, half empty or yeah. half full? I see the fucking glass. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, there is a glass. Work with it. People are trying to find out if the water is alpha or not. But you have a glass. <laughs> Some people don't have a fucking glass. That's all I see. Work with it. You know what I mean? And people always see it as, oh my god. And the bigger picture is not there. If it's half empty, it's you, have, you have it. You have it. Everyone have what is required. That's why I go back to the U.S. national team. You, wherever you, if you're from Texas or New Hampshire or wherever you're from, it doesn't matter. If you want it and you have the, if you have that person that can guide you. However, when you look at some of the best athletes in the world, past, present, or whatever, there was always someone weird behind them. However weird you want to call it, tough, rough, pushing, not pushing, not accepting much. If you take, look at inner history, dad or mom or something weird made that, that guy had, had an edge. Greatest player that the U.S. men's national team has ever had? Do you... I don't know about all that, but you say something made you. Mm. I'd say my sister that passed away. I think that's losing when it... her. Switch. It's like life is short. Make the most of it. So for me, that's what made. And also, uh, like angry. Was so the I... anger from that loss? Yeah. So I like, uh, I, I feel what he says about just being like, you had to be angry to, to be successful. So uh, I relate to that. Mm. You know what Charlie said about forgiveness and forgiveness kind of giving you that release, right? To, to, to move past things. Who do, who do you have to forgive in that scenario? That's hard, right? Because 
So I don't know how you let go of the anger if you don't know who to forgive for that. Do you know what I mean? I had to forgive myself. Because the last conversation I, I had with her was like, it's me asking to go to a friend's house. And it's like, is mom and dad there? She's like, no. I said, okay, fine, bye. Instead of like, I love you and all that kind of stuff. So I had to forgive myself. I'm trying to get the emotion up in this No, life. I wasn't trying to. Yeah. I appreciate you saying that. Man. Mm. How long does it take until you can look back and just like, just remember the good stuff? Do you know what I mean? I do. I mean, I remember us doing like, follow the leader, to jump like into the water, copy each other's dance moves. I remember watching her play tennis. I remember talking about like, what if something happened one day, like one of us passed away, like would you want us to come back and like write something in the mirror? Like, nah, it might freak us out or whatever. And then it was like, I was like, well shoot, if he ever passed away, maybe come back, help me score a goal. So you think about 2010, playing against England. But like, probably had a little help there. So that kind of stuff. And you talk about being from a place should have never made it in the sport. Like, man, I'm from nowhere. Really, I mean, I love where I'm from. Nacogdoches, yeah. I'm very prideful of where mm -hmm. I come from, Texas, but like, it's a rural town, not known for soccer. People always looked at you crazy for, for the sport you played, right? Why aren't you playing baseball, football, basketball? It's just, just, it's just what I love to do. And I wish I'd have had someone like, like you, coach, that, that could help me more I had great coaches, they helped me. Mm -hmm. But like a coach that you had, something like that, what could I have really done? Right. I did okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? But not like. But I'm at peace. Talking, hugging. Love discussions about anything. Like at my house, it's, uh, it's like I, we would have won the silent game. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Like it, was, it wasn't such a thing as discussion wasn't a thing. Mm. Like, like it wasn't about uh, like don't talk, don't bring happiness, don't bring sadness back home. It was just it was just like, and then you get used to it. So for me, if you like knowing just you can talk, like you can, we can share something. So like, for example, right now, and I, and I said that to my, to, this is why it's, it's, it's difficult at times because I can talk to you. Like if my mom was here, I wouldn't be able to speak to her like that. Because it, it won't come out. It's weird. Like if I hug my mom, it would be almost, you know, at the end when you go like, okay, it's enough, you know, like, uh, you know. Because, like, like, like you said, like you, when you talk about her dad, is also it's not about it's accepting that they had their tools in a certain way, and I can go deeper, like you did in, in, in some ways of behavior, right? That if you think about it now, I'm like, was that necessary? Do you know what I mean? But those were the tools that they, they had. But along the way, that has an impact on you. It does have an impact, and I can speak to, and I'm way more open now. Before me, oh my gosh, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't like that. But I, I, I feel people, like I, I don't know, can I put that into words? Like I knew your story. If it's just right to say, to say something, I think, you know. And so I don't know if you, I, I don't know if you can say that about. I, I don't know what it is exactly, but what, I feel the need of what I didn't have. Uh, to, to, to give it and share it, if you mm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, because, because for a long time, my happiness was through people. My sadness was, was through people because I couldn't share happiness and sadness. So I don't know, I just, I, no dolls, no feelings, no nothing, dead. Just like, okay, we have a game on Tuesday. Okay, right, we have a game on Tuesday. I was, I was so annoying. <laughs> now, I used to come in the, in the game, we won. I was like, you know, we won by luck. You know, 
I, I was all, always something, you know, like... Never satisfied. No, I was always, always happy, but never satisfied. And, and I guess it's because I always wanted to make my dad happy. And, and in a way, I didn't because I never had the approval. Do you think that's what made you so good? Or, and also on another side, do you feel like you never smelt the, the, the roses while you were playing, like enjoyed the, the big I'm, good I, moments? Yeah, you're right. I think I'm you need to have the right balance. I think you, 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 you need to have that demeanor. You need, to have, you need to be a killer, but sometimes also along the way in your career, you need to have that smile and you need to have that, that way about you to balance it out. I only, I only could react, rage was my thing. Like, I, I needed to be upset. Like, Can if I, you said... Sorry, if, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, you, you, I needed to be upset. Like, if you said to me, oh, man, I, like, wind me up, say something, that's when I want to play. Like, because my dad, I, that, was, that was my, you know, so that's why people always say, that, that guy never celebrates. Because when I used to score a goal, I used to think about the one that I missed before that was way harder than the one that I scored. So in my celebration, I was like, what the fuck? I'm, I scored, and then, uh, and then you kind of, around, towards the end, you're like, oh shit, I need to do something here. Uh, oh fuck it, it's too late. You go back. And I know when you look at it, people were like, look at this guy. He scored a goal like everyone will dream to, to score, and he's not even celebrating, but people didn't understand the process. I was programmed to think about what I didn't do. So what I did was just what I did. And so, but like I said, you know, you said your, your wife saved you. And I'm, I'm not saying that in a bad way for, for my partner because she, but my kids saved me. My kids re-educated me because they made me understand what a smile was, what hugging was. Again, I understand me well, I'm not a, a, who, a, lo a love. Of who a, that little Thierry was. You know what, I'll share something that's very important. So, Montreal, a year without seeing my family, MLS is back. We were in New Jersey playing all our game away from home. No, I'm not having a good Montreal. It's not the best team in the league at the time. Didn't make the playoff for five years or whatever. We suddenly make the playoff somehow. We nearly beat you guys. Uh, you know, we had nobody, but nearly made it. Hey, last minute goal from Boo yeah. to win it 2-1. But anyway, whatever. I go home. But I go home, you know, with, with a heavy heart, like almost as a stranger, you know, because I haven't been there for a year. So it was weird, COVID time. I'm trying to readjust on the getting, being, I was like a host at my house. It's a, a guest, sorry, at my house, sorry. So a month passes, I have to go back to Montreal. We don't know, obviously, what's going to happen with COVID because, you know, is it going to come back? Is it, is it, what are we doing? Is the, the league going to start? Can people travel? Not, it was just that second wave again or whatever it was, third one, whatever. And I don't know if you guys know, but in, in Canada, it was crazy. Yeah. This is why the free team had to relocate because the U.S. team couldn't, couldn't get in, whatever. So I'm preparing my bags, whatever. I'm saying bye to everybody, right? I'm about to leave. So I open the door, say bye to everybody. Everybody starts to cry. From the, the nanny to, to, to everybody starts to cry. Like one kid on my leg, one kid there, partner, other one there. Obviously, I start to cry, everybody cry. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I was a human being. Not because I play for Arsenal, you like me. That's what I'm feeling. I'm not saying, understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying people didn't. Me, for the first time, they, they saw the little Thierry. That the little Thierry got that love. Like, for the first time, I put my bags down and I went, hey, they see me. Not the player, the, and, and that's my family. Don't, I mean, Understand me well. That was me in my mind doing. My mind can, you know, mind can play tricks, yeah. uh, as you know. But for the first time, I felt like a human being. So I put my bag down and I said, I'm staying. This is why I stopped at uh, our stop at Montreal, because I'm like, I'm like, like they gave me that approval that I was looking for a long time. Like, and they gave me a sense of who I was at that particular moment. Because when you see your kids and everybody crying at the same time, they were crying for me and not the football player which in my, in my life, it was always that, oh, you're a good player. Oh, you're a good player. Oh, you're good. 
you know, and suddenly you start to, you don't even listen to it, you just go with the motion and, and so on. And so that day, that wasn't one of the first time that I could hold the hand of my little guy. That's crazy. It's the first time that we, I felt a connection. Like I, I've been looking for that for a long time. And who can give you that? People are close to you, right? And kids are genuine. Do you if, think you have, if, if you have something on your face and you don't look good, they'll tell you right there. <laughs> they'll let you know. And they did let me know that I mattered, not because of what I became. What about um, forgiveness for you? Was that something you had to find? You know what, I forgive, the word forgiving, because if you analyze it with, that was their, their way. I traveled, I speak different languages, I read, I know that you can get educated a different way. So for a very long time, my problem was never forgiving. Mm. And I didn't realize my problem was digesting it. And I didn't know where the anger was coming from. Because for me, I was just normal. Right. Like you step on my toe, I'm like, what, what the F are you doing? Like, it's, what are you, it's just my reaction was this, not like trying to understand why you're upset or anything. Like I, I was going to say my piece and walk out. I didn't know where the anger was coming from because I was like, wait, hang on a minute. I forgave whatever situation I had before. I should be fine now. But yeah, that has an impact on you however you want to look at it, that football amplified, by the way. And being in bracket, in bracket, because without a team, you cannot do anything. But when you're the guy that every time people expect you to perform, expect you to lead, we're in trouble. Can you, uh, hello, Thierry, you still didn't turn up. You know when you go with that on your shoulder every game? Mm -hmm. You know how it feels? Like that, it's nil-nil, and everybody's like this. Is he all right? You know? Not like I'm, I'm not saying that in a bad way, but when you know when you're the guy, that burden of always performing, being good every day in training, because it, 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 does, it does have a lot on you. It's draining. It's draining physically, mentally, going with what you went through and what you went through and what you went through. It's, it's just... It takes a lot, and that's why when often after when they, they stop, they struggle. They struggle because the only thing that could keep them at bay and going straight was competing. What do you hide now? Where do I hide all the things that I was hiding? I need to discover what's happening in, with me, where the anger is coming from, why I'm short sometimes with, with my answers, why for me for a long time where in my world it was okay. Mm -hmm. If a, guy doesn't, if a guy doesn't give me the ball well, I don't give you the ball, give you the ball well, I turn and say, hey, what the fuck, man, the ball is in front. What are you doing? Like, and walk off. I didn't care if the guy was hurt or not. So We're here you, to win. Did you feel like you struggled with retirement? I didn't struggle with stopping football. Mm. I struggled with, now I'm realizing my demons. Because before, you have a game, whoop, you play, you play Real Madrid, you play in the national team, you have a tournament. I don't have time to think about where my inner child is. I don't have time to think about how I've been educated. I don't have time to think about, am I emotional enough? Uh, am, am I vulnerable? Do I show empathy to people that are vulnerable? That, that, I'm here to win. I'm not here to, 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 to be a babysitter or whatever. We're here to win. <laughs> then when that's away, Oh, wait, and then by the way, COVID hit. So nobody wants to be alone in their thoughts, no one. Because what it brings you into is the dark one, always. When you're in, in a place alone and you start to think about, so it was a, a double hit for me because I stopped football, okay, I did my stuff, I passed my badges or whatever, boom, you, boom, you arrive in, in Montreal, COVID. Oh, what makes me happy? Wait, 
because you don't think about you it. You start having those football, existential yes. thoughts. What that makes you've you never, happy? Yeah. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Then everything that used to make me happy or makes me happy was stuff that I used to do for people. But ultimately, when you look at it well, what makes you happy it was always, oh, my kids are, my, my, I like when I do that with my, yeah, but you alone. Let's say you, there's nobody with you. What mm. makes you happy? I struggled. Because if everything referred to, to football, I guess, and I didn't even know if I was happy, but to, to again, making people happy. It was always through others, never me. And then you start to think about how your dad was with you, how your mom was with you, how you were also with others. More importantly, was I a good teammate? It's debatable. But if you bring me back to my time and we have to win, we're half time, nil nil, you're going to hear me. It's... What do you think people would say about you? What kind of teammate you were? I was a pain in the neck for the good of the cause. Uh -huh. That I was a pain in the neck for the good of the cause. I was going to let you know, man, always. We were 6 nil up or 7 nil up, your pass is not good, you're going to hear me. Because that's how I was with myself. So if, I, if I'm like that with myself, you're going to hear me. What was Clint like as a teammate? Aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> and I, because when we were coming, when he was playing, you know, I was in college, and we got to put scrimmage the New England Revolution, and. Clint was the most skilled American player with the ball. And so I'd watch these games because this is the local professional team. And we got to play them in a, sp in a spring friendly. And, you know, I had, I had played really well. But what stood out to me was, yeah, we're college kids, but he would play, he was given 100. Some of his other guys are like, ah, it's college, whatever. And we were running them. But when he played, it was 100%. And he scored and he's like, can't nobody touch me. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we oh. played together in the national team, I just wanted to keep proving to, to everybody, but to him, that if we go to war, I'm right next to him. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not one to shy away. Like, I'm, I'm ready for the battle. I'm always down. I'm not, I'm not afraid. And I, I'll play with, without fear, too. I'm not afraid to make mistakes on the pitch and try and be daring with him. And that's what stood out to me is he was real 100% of the time, whether mm -hmm. it was a player or a coach. And even the times when he's talking to coach, I'm like, damn, I, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs>
like she was looking maybe sometime, trying to see what was in my brain. Like she didn't see a fucking door. There's no door. There was no doors in terms of emotion. So you can talk to me as much as you want when I was a player or whatever, you're not getting anything. Because I wasn't equipped, I didn't have those signals, I didn't know. Like, I can't, you can't know everything, right? Like, mm. I, was, I was okay on the field. But when I was, like, you know, I never wanted to be in a situation where I was going to be vulnerable. Mm. Because the leader is not supposed to, like, I was about to say something that I, I stopped myself saying. Back in the days, if you, had asked, if you had asked me what's the best quality of a leader, I would have said he needs to be a killer, he needs to be like whatever, and above of, oh yeah, he needs to be tough, rough. Now oh you would God. say what? what? Two things. You need to be vulnerable and have empathy. Those are my two things. Once you show that to your team, they will die for you. Because you, they know you're not perfect. Then they can understand maybe the message after that. But if you share, if you share some personal stuff, exactly like what Charlie said before, I can be here talking about winning the Walker. I can be here talking about, but this discussion became serious when we started to talk about this because everybody in this room can relate. This is where it brings people along. I don't care who you are. If I talk about a goal, not a lot of people can relate about how I score that goal, even football players. But if we talk about upbringing, parents, emotion, vulnerable, empathy, anger, People, we all have a story here. It's gonna hit you. Whatever it is, at one point you go, oh, that's me. Wow, did I deal with that? Did I not deal with that? Do I have the right tools? Am I aware of it? Am I not aware of it? Am I in denial or whatever? And I think at that particular moment, that's where you, know, you, can, you can reach people and, and whoever you are, those two things are, are, are for me now very important. And before the same, I used to think about trophies and this and that. And yes, don't get me wrong, but the most important thing for me is how you transcend people and what you transmit. When people feel that no matter what, whether you are a winner or loser or whatever, but they understand emotions. And for a very long time, I've been lied to, we have been lied to, being in the game and the way I've been educated, although they were the tools that they had, like, it's good to be vulnerable. Empathy is, it's, is actually outstanding, but I didn't know. Right. I didn't know in my field, if you, at one point, I, if you go and see the coach and you say, coach, I just had an argument with my partner last night, I didn't sleep, you're on the bench. Mm -hmm. And I was that same way until the car accident changed me. I couldn't show emotion. Why did the car accident change you? I woke up, I achieved a, a goal that every footballer dreams of, playing in a World Cup. I, I had it in my hands. So the, the one thing I really wanted. I had it in my hands and I wake up and I'm in a hospital bed and I can't move. Can't even breathe, I have a breathing tube. And in that moment, going from top, the top of life to the bottom, and not knowing what's, what's gonna happen in the future, I knew I, I had everything and I lost it. But I had to trick my mind into thinking I can get it back. That's the only way I was gonna get up out of the bed and keep pushing and say, oh, I can still make it, and trick myself to say, I'm gonna give 24 hours to making it up because I let my family down, I let my team down, I let the country down. And in that moment, I just felt, what's really important in life is it playing soccer? Is it, is it scoring goals? Is it playing in a World Cup representing your country? Or is it that I have my life still? And it was a priest that came into my room every day in the hospital, every day. Have you seen the car that you're in? No. You shouldn't be here. He looked at me in my eyes, you should not be here. But you are here. There's a bigger plan for you. You're here because you're important. There's, there's, there's a, a reason for that. So don't ever forget that. You are very fortunate to be alive. Many people do not survive that. So keep that with you. And that's always stuck with me. As much as I push and I, and I tried to do as much as I could to make up for what I lost, and obviously I, I didn't get all the way, I went pretty far, but ultimately I knew 
just being alive, not taking things for granted because I took everything for granted in that moment that, man, if I can just in, embrace and enjoy every day and make the people around me know that I care about these relationships, that I want to help everybody I can, that that was what was important. Can you paint that picture for us like in a little bit more detail in terms of how close you were to make, like, you were a lock for the roster, yeah. right? Yeah. How far been a away were you from? What? It had been a starter. Mm -hmm. There was no it's, players so, going to Azteca scoring and, I mean. And, and at what point, the, the car accident happens at Cup. what point in time before the World Cup? So Confederations Cup is when I really came onto the scene and I, I felt like I finally showed I should be playing every game. We link up in the goal against Spain and we win 2-0. Then we get to, you know, 45 minutes, a brilliant 45 minutes against Brazil. You got to start us off against Egypt, though, too. <laughs> the game that we needed to win in 3 nothing to even get out of the group. And then we up 2-0 two, two against Brazil at half. We end up losing 3-2. But I felt, OK, now I want more. I, I, I tasted what it, it means to play at the highest level, playing against Puyol and Lucio and, and PK and feeling like I got the better of some of those moments where we had the aerial duels, 1v1, show my, I said, I, I need this every day. I want this. And, and going to France and Ligue 1, my first home debut, playing Bordeaux, they won the, the, the league and scoring a brace. I said, I'm, I'm ready for it, I want more. So I, fit, I felt that the World Cup was that moment for me to say, now I can be in that stratosphere. I can be competing against players that TRE plays every week. And all of a sudden to throw it away. We had qualified for the World Cup. We beat Honduras and Honduras. Everyone's celebrating. We go to Washington DC for the last game. I had picked up like a little strain in my groin. We were playing Lyon on the weekend. Bob Bradley said, you're not gonna play. So in that moment, I was selfish and we had a curfew. I figured I'm not playing, doesn't matter, it doesn't apply to me. I went out, and then I wake up in a hospital. I wasn't driving the car, but I put myself in that position. Mm. So I didn't blame anybody as well. There's not a single person I blame for my, for my misfortunes ever. And I think I made peace with that. I made peace with the fact that things happen in life, you gotta adjust and make the most of it. And then I think that's what helped carry me on because as tough as that phone call was from Bob Bradley in May to say, Charlie, we appreciate you working hard to get back and in training, but you're not gonna make the World Cup roster or the camp. Is that, that moment being as low as you possibly can be, I knew I'd, I, I what would it do to stop and quit or cry? You know, I cried for, for weeks, but I kept pushing. And when you have kids, that was the moment that you're like, man, life is, it's not about me anymore. It's about my children. About, you already had kids at that point in time. I had kids when, when I got cancer at the okay. same time. And um, the accident, as, as low as I was in that moment, that, that was kind of what I leaned on, those experiences when my kids were born three months early and I'm in the hospital for 92 days. My wife is, you know, doing her best to be brave and be there every day. I'm trying to train and practice and be the best husband and, and teammate at the same time, trying to compete with, I had always chased this goal of getting back on the national team. Because all I cared about was getting one more opportunity to put on the shirt. Mm. Didn't have to play in the World Cup. I just wanted one chance to put on the shirt. And then I get injured and like, oh, you have a tumor. So at that moment, I, that was the lowest point in my life because I thought that's when I was going to, death caught up with me. Like I had lived a, a number of lives and I'm not going to be there to see my kids grow. Did you, you so you, you really feared death at that point? Yeah. I didn't think, I thought that was it. What kind of, uh, what was the prognosis that they gave you at the time? 
I had a liposarcoma cancer, and so everything happens for a reason, I, I feel, at this point, because the kids were born early, which caused me to be fatigued, which caused me to pull my groin muscle, which I've never pulled before. And that's why you're, again, they're getting an MRI, right? And I got an MRI. Which is why they caught the tumor. And they caught the tumor at Dang. a very early stage. Mm. So I had a, a extensive surgery, had to remove a testicle and, and take four months out of the game. And at that point I said, I came back from a car accident. Like I wanna show my, my, un, my, born, my newborn kids, like don't stop. Like that's another hurdle, another challenge. Did you consistently feel like that though? Because it's like it's hard to maintain hope at times, right? Sometimes you're just emotionally spent, like you don't have any more fight. Did you never get to that point that you felt like I don't have this in me? Not until the end, until when I retired, because it was the moment where do I keep fighting to chase something that's really not there? What am I? When I could see the strain of my wife trying to raise twin boys with me playing and chasing this, chasing the game. I knew at that point what was more valuable, and that it was. It felt like a choice between family and yes, and, and football. Mm. And I felt at that moment it's more important to be with my family. What's more important to me that they're happy and feel supported in a in a place where they don't have to move, they don't have to think about what's next. Can you relate to that? For sure. I mean, after my second heart procedure. I just felt like, man, I couldn't give what I, what I needed that I used to could give on, on the pitch. You know, yeah, I had, was able to get comeback player of the year. We were able to get to the finals versus Toronto for the second time. And, and I had After it, the I, first half, the heart procedure. After, the, after my first, the second one, okay. you know what I mean? Because I did one, it didn't work. I was playing half, over half a season with it and they couldn't figure out what it was. Basically, I was getting like palpitations or, or whatever. And it was like my heart was beating fast when like it kind of shouldn't, like I was a neutral or something. And so I got the procedure done the first time, didn't work, got it done the second time, but I had to wait a few months to do it. Then I was able to come back and it was about just like getting back and, 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 and proving that, you know, I could overcome it. And because they said it's something that, you know, it could be done. So I was like, all right, I was able to do that, get back into the national team. And, and you know, try to help them qualify for the World Cup. That was that was a, a big goal of mine. My first game back with the national team, getting a hat trick. So it was like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and, and ended up having a good season. But then we don't make the the World Cup. We don't qualify for the, for that for 2018. And then that last year um, of being at, at Seattle, I just felt like there there was nothing to chase, and I didn't have that fight within me anymore. That you need to be the difference maker in a game. You know what I'm saying? And so when the opportunity was to like, do you want to retire? I was like, I'm like, yeah. I mean, I always knew that that was going to be my last year anyway, but it was like, and I'm always someone that was that angry guy, had the fight, you know, and then it was just like, it's not worth me risking my life. Even though mm. it, it wasn't like I was good, it's a life threatening thing that I had, but yeah, you could, you know, it could come back. You could faint on the field and hit your head, or, you know, things could happen. I was like, do I need to want to keep chasing this and end on a different note and move my kids around a lot? I was like, no, it's like, I'm good with what I've done. I'm at peace with it. And so I can relate well with just not having that fight anymore that you needed to have to be at that next level to be successful. I feel you. I think So I think if I look back, right, at like personal pain that I went through, when I reflect on that now, the overwhelming kind of, feeling for me is gratitude, right? Is you can see the path that you could have ended up on and where you could have been. And now I just feel really grateful for, for where I am and the blessings that I have in life. Do you all feel like, like that? Like you're like, despite that struggle, you're in such a good place now. I couldn't be in a better place. That's great. That's how I look at it. I got healthy kids, wife, this life that I enjoy, don't have to strain my body. I have to be, be going into 50-50 challenges, all the, the, the fitness and conditioning it takes, the grind. After my car accident, I had to train three times, four times as hard as everyone else just to keep up. And at the same time, trying to chase my old self. I was playing this catch-up game. That wore me down. 
I couldn't give you five solid days of training. I couldn't do it. Physically, I could not do it. Give you two. And if the coach is like, okay, that's good enough, because in Europe, it's five. It's six. If you can't do it, you don't play. You got to bring it every day. I couldn't do that. I could give you two. If, the, if two is good enough, great. And that, that just wore on me and wore on me and wore on me, and I just kept going. So now in this, this space, I'm, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be here. <laughs> I'm alive. Amen. Um, you know, I, I mean, obviously, we've all worked together, right? Champions League. And we've done so much CONCACAF Nations League, all of that. And I think that on the outside, what so many people get to see, right, is the fun, the laughs that we have, because we do have those, right? But I just, I feel really grateful to have met all three of you as people, to consider you friends, and, and to be able to share a moment like this, because I, I don't take that for granted, you know what I mean? Everything that all of you shared. Like I said, I felt like I knew you. I thought we were tight. Yeah, and now I feel I like, man, I, I didn't know any yeah. of that stuff. And so I just want to say I, I love you all and I'm really grateful. I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Love you too. Love you too. <laughs> Thierry, it was a dope surprise. Thank you. You know what? Can I give you a hug? Oh, you want to hug can me? I, can I give all three of you a hug? I appreciate you so much. So you. You're the best. Amen. Sure. Hey. I'll hug you first. Hey, I'm Clint. Yo. That was good. Mm. Gonna have to top that. <laughs> I went, I went. They're gonna have to cut. That's gonna be good stuff, man. They're gonna have to cut some stuff. I like to say, I think I'm like probably the most normal goalkeeper out there. Oh, really? I actually, yeah. I Who's actually the believe that. Uh, phew, the weirdest? Either Bobby Shuttleworth, he was the first goalie I ever saw where I was like, oh my God, that guy's crazy, or Aaron Ramsdale. He's also bananas, that guy. Yeah, he's fucking weird, but I love him. Are you too normal? Yeah, probably. It's, but maybe because I'm so normal, that makes me weird, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you liked this episode of Kicking It, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to enjoy more raw and unfiltered content from me and the boys.